Inspector, what is it? It's another case for Nick Carter, Master Detective. Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Presented by the three great Linex home brighteners. Linex clear gloss, Linex cream polish, and Linex self-polishing wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme quality paints. Today's curious adventure... The Slingshot Murders, or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Broken Window. In just a moment, we'll find out how Nick Carter solved the mystery of the Slingshot Murders. But first, here's something worth thinking about. A lovely home adds to the joy of living. And just as thousands of American homemakers have brought new beauty to their walls with Chemtone, the miracle wall finish... So are they learning that Linex self-polishing wax gives their floors a satiny new luster without tiresome rubbing. Easily wiped on, Linex self-polishing wax dries to a tough, elastic finish that resists wear amazingly because it contains so much genuine carnauba wax with no gum, shellac, or resin in it to chip or crumble. It resists water and dirt, too, so that soil is safely removed from the surface with a damp cloth or mild suds. And Linex self-polishing wax is the non-skid floor finish, resisting slip even when water is spilled on it. The underwriter's laboratories, whose seal is on each bottle, have proved this. Ask for Linex self-polishing wax at your paint, hardware, or department store. Headquarters for all three great Linex home brighteners and Chemtone, the miracle wall finish that dries in one hour. And now for today's mysterious adventure with Nick Carter. Our story opens in Nick's office, where he and Patsy are having a good-natured argument. Good-natured, that is, until about now. But, Nick, I don't think that's true. Take me, for example. Since I've been working with you, I've learned to observe things I never saw before. Perhaps, Patsy. You've undoubtedly improved while you've been my assistant, but I still say that you really see very little that goes on around you, in spite of all my training. Oh, Nick, anybody would think that I... All right, Patsy, let's see. How many steps are there from the sidewalk up to the front door of your house? Why, there are... Let me see, there are... How high up the floor are the windows in your bedroom? Well, there are about two. No, no, one and a half. What color is a two-cent stamp? Red. Good for you. Thought you were going to say chartreuse. Nicholas Carter's office. Is Mr. Carter there? Oh, is that you, Penny? Sure. How are you, Miss Bowen? I'm fine, thanks. How are things with you? Pretty good. Can I talk to Nick? Of course, Penny. Here he is. Hello, Penny. How's my special assistant this afternoon? That's what I called you up about, Nick. I think there's going on down here. Could you come over? What is it, Penny? Trouble? Gee, Nick, I don't know, but it looks bad to me. Well, can't you tell me what it is? Not on the phone, Nick. You know you always told me to be careful what I said on the phone. Some of the gang might be listening in. And quite right, Penny. All right, I'll take a run over there. You at your newsstand? Yeah. Park your car down the block away so they can't see you. I'll be waiting. Okay, Penny. Be down right away. So long. What was that all about, Nick? Sounded very important. Penny thought it was important, too. But he wouldn't say what it was. He's seen something and thinks I ought to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what you get for being his hero, Nick. He thinks you're just about the greatest guy in the world. His ambition in life is to be a great detective like you. Yes, I know it. And ever since his old man died in my arms, I've felt I ought to sort of keep an eye on him. And he's smart, too. He never forgets things I've told him about how to see what goes on around him. Some people I know, not so very far from here, could profit by his example. Okay, Mr. Carter, okay. Get in your car and be on your way. Lead me to a little peace and quiet here. You and your wisecrack. Very well, Patsy. Since I'm not wanted here, I'll go call on Penny. I hope he's got something more exciting up his sleeve than I think he has. <laughs> Nick, I thought you were never coming. Well, sorry, Penny, but you know how traffic is. Sure, I know. Come around the back of the stand, Nick, so nobody will see us talking together. Okay, Penny. Now, what's up? You see across the street there? You see the bank? Yes. And you see the empty stores on each side of the bank? Yes. Well, a little while ago, a big black sedan pulled up and two guys got out and went into the vacant store on this side of the bank. Then two more guys got out and went into the empty store on the other side. Then 
The sedan drove away and left the four guys there. That's odd. Any idea what might be going on? Well, Nick, there's several factories around here, and today's the day the bank downtown sends the money to this bank for the payrolls. Tomorrow, sadly, you know. I see what you mean, Penny. You think those men may be planning to hold up the bank when the money gets here, huh? Well, gosh, Nick, don't it look like that to you? Could be, Penny. Yes, it does look suspicious. But, Penny, robbery's not in my line. This is a job for Lieutenant Riley and the city police. I'll give them a ring and tell them what you saw. You'll have to hurry, Nick. It's almost 4 o'clock, and that's when the car comes with the money. Well, I'll phone Riley now. Maybe he can get one of the squad cars Nick, to get... Nick, here a... it comes. Look! Yes. It's an armored car, all right. And it's stopping in front of the bank. They're starting to unload the money, and they don't know they're making Wait here. trouble. I'll warn them they're in danger. I'll hold up the truck, Nick! Get back, Penny. Keep out of the way. I'll see if I can help the guards by picking off some of the thugs with my gun. Look out! I won't. I'll stay behind this pole. You got one, Nate? I think so, but there I'm... Nick! Nick, are you dead? Are you, Nick? You're bleeding. Oh, Nick. Something on my leg, Nick. Nick, they're getting away. Nick, we didn't stop them. But, Doc, I tell you, there's nothing wrong with me. Eh? Nothing except that you've lost about a quart of blood. There's a nasty hole in the side of your neck. But I can't stay here doing nothing. I've got to get after those thugs. I've got to get oh, out Nick, of here. they just told me you were here. Are you hurt badly? Oh, it's only a scratch, Patsy. But this sawbones wants to keep me here cooped up like a pet rabbit. How is he, Doctor? Really? He, he's got a bad hole in the side of his neck. And oh. Nothing fatal. He'll get over it. But he's lost a lot of blood, too. He's got to be quiet and give nature a chance. Now, look, Doc, look. Nature's going to have a tough time doing anything for me if you keep me here worrying because I can't get out. Nick, you're going to stay here and like it. Good girl. If you don't behave, I'll call some attendants and have them undress you. Then you'll have to stay here whether you like it or not. But, Patsy, I tell you, there's nothing... Where's Nick? I want Nick! Nick! Well, there's Penny. Nick! What's he doing here? I want to see Nick! Here I am, Penny. I'm coming, son. You get right back in that bed, Nick, Carter, if you don't... Sorry, Patsy, but Penny wants me. Why, Penny... What happened to you? Oh, nothing much, Nick. A bullet got me in the leg, that's all. That's all? Well, that's enough. Are you hurt bad, son? No, nah, Doc says I'll be all right in a few days. But I got something to tell you, Nick. What is it, son? You know when I yelled at you just before you got shot? Yes, I remember. Well, I saw a guy standing in the window of the house across the street from the bank. Must have been a lookout or something. And just as I looked up, I saw a name at you. So I yelled, then he fired. Did you get a good look at him, Penny? No, but I know which window it was. Good boy. Which one was it? You'll see. I busted it with my slingshot so you'd know it. I put a marble right through it. And on the first shot, too. I thought maybe you'd find a clue there, if you looked. Penny, you're a wonder. I'm proud to have you for an assistant. It was a window on the fourth floor of a brown house. You can't miss it. Yes, sir, Penny. I'm proud to have you for an assistant. Nick, are you going to get back to bed, or do I I can't go back to bed, Patsy. I've got to go places. Things to do. Can't let Penny down, not after the way he fixed things up for me. Nick. Yes, Penny? Take this with you, Nick. It's as good as a gun sometimes. I use it a lot. Why, well, thanks, Penny. That slingshot of yours may come in handy. I'll keep it right where I can get at it fast if I need it. Oh, there you are, Nick. Oh, you're all right, I... Why, certainly I'm all right. You got any other gang? Oh, no, Nick, we didn't. We found the car they were in, wrecked six blocks away, but there was nobody in it. The car was stolen, too, so that's no help. Did they get much? Well, three guys are killed, one in the hospital, and a hundred thousand dollars in small bills is missing. That's all I know. I ain't got a lead in the world right now. Well, I have, thanks to Penny here. Penny? Who's Penny? My assistant. And one of the best assistants a man could ever have. He just gave me some dope that may crack the whole case wide open. Well, what is it, man? Tell me quick. Not yet, Riley. This is confidential between Penny and me. Huh? If it works out, I'll let you know. Well, Penny, so long. I'll be seeing you. So long, Nick. Good luck. Nick Carter, where are you going now? I'm hot on the trail, Patsy, and nothing can stop me. Well, if I can't stop you, at least I'm going with you. You certainly can't drive a car in your condition. Okay, then. Come on. Time's a-wasting. Look, don't you need some help, Nick? I'll send some of the boys with you. No, Riley. This is a one-man job. And I'm the man who's going to try to do it. Patsy, I wish you hadn't come. There may be trouble. You may just as well save your breath, Mr. Carter, because I'm going wherever you're going, and that's that. You can't drive in your condition. Well, I could if you'd let me. Well, I'm not going to let you, so that's that. I don't know what gets into you women. 
When you make up your minds, a team of horses couldn't change it. You ready to tell me where you're going? I can't keep on driving blindly all around the city, Nick. All right, all right. I give up. I'm going back to the scene of the robbery. What are you going to do there? That, my nosy young friend, is strictly my business. Okay, okay. But I'd feel a lot safer if I knew what you were planning to do. Ah, it's dark now. You can pull up just around the corner from the bank. I'll get out there. Then you go back to the office. How will you get back? Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. I hope so. Is this where you want to go? Yes, drop me here. Now remember you, back to the office. Okay, bully. But I don't like you going anywhere alone as weak as you are. It's skill that counts in this business, Patsy, not muscle. Now get going. I've got work to do. So Nick is going alone to investigate the house where the killers were who shot him. Does he have any idea what dangers lie ahead of him? And will he find any clues to the killers? We'll see in just a moment. Have you been wishing for a furniture polish that will clean your furniture too? Linex Cream Polish, the modern protection for your furniture's beauty, saves one complete step by cleaning as it polishes, without tiresome rubbing. Learn firsthand how much time and effort Linex Cream Polish saves. Linex Cream Polish removes that cloudy dust and polish accumulation in one quick, easy application that also does away with fingerprints and helps conceal ugly scratches. And Linex Cream Polish dries hard, leaving no oily film to attract additional dust to make additional work. So try it and see how simple it can be to clean and polish your furniture at the same time. Ask your dealer for Linex, L-I-N-X. Linex Cream Polish. You'll find it at your paint, hardware, or department store where all three great home brighteners and Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, are featured. And now, back to our story. We left Nick, weak from loss of blood, climbing the stairs to the fourth floor of the old tenement house, trying to find some clue to the killers who shot him and robbed the bank. As we rejoin him, he's nearly reached the top. I wish it wasn't the fourth floor. I don't feel as ambitious as I did. Well, that's a break. Only one apartment on the street side. And there's someone home, judging by the light under the door. Uh, here goes. Well, what do you want? I'm investigating the bank holdup across the street this afternoon. Bank holdup? Yes. You knew the bank was held up, didn't you? Yeah, I heard. I was out working at the time. What do you want to get in here for? I want to look out of your windows. See, it's like this. We have a witness who says he saw the whole thing from the window next door on this level. He's a cranky old guy with a reputation for stretching the truth, so I want to check up on him. I'd like to look from your windows and see if he really could have seen what he said he did. Sounds nutty to me. Why don't you look out of his windows? I did, and I still can't be sure. So I want to check all the windows on this floor. There ain't no use in... Well, okay, come on in. Thanks. I won't be long. Mind if I put this window shade up? Suit yourself. I well, can't see much from here. I'll try the other window. Hmm. Can't see anything from here either. Well, I guess the old guy was dreaming. Couldn't see the bank at all with an armored car standing in front of it. You're satisfied now? So far, yes. Okay to look in the other room, too? Yeah, I guess so. My wife's in there. I'll see if she's dressed. Certainly no broken windows in this room. And none of them been repaired either. Somebody coming in, Mary. You dressed? Yes, dear. Come in. Okay, copper, you can go in. Thanks. Sorry to bother you, lady. I won't be but a minute. Okay, take your time. No broken windows here either. Penny must have made a mistake in the window. How about it, copper? Ah, I guess the old guy must have... Hey, do you have any children in the house? Sure. Uh, no kids? Why? Oh, just saw a marble here on the floor and wondered. 
Penny said he shot a marble through the window. Well, come on. If you've seen all you want, you better... Now, just a minute. Just a minute. I want to take another look at this window. Get your hands up, Flatfoot. Make it snappy. Well, I don't see what... Oh, you don't, huh? You come up here looking for a broken window, didn't you? And when you didn't find none, you go around poking your fingers in the putty. Well, really, don't now... Don't try I... to kid me. I've been watching you. So you found the window with a soft putty where we put the new pane of glass in. Well, it won't do you no good now. All right, Slug, I'll take over now. My Jake Larner. So you're Slug's wife. Yeah. Well, I'd never have known you in that woman's outfit. Pretty clever. A lot cleverer than you, copper. You come right up here just begging for it, didn't you? I thought we'd give it to you for keeps out in front of the bank this afternoon, but I'm glad now we didn't. This is going to be more fun. We can make it last longer. Burn him down, Jake. No, Slug. Shooting's too quick. I got a better plan for this dumb punk than that. Go right ahead, gentlemen. Don't mind me. But do you mind if I put my arms down? Get his gun, Slug. Sure, Jake. Quite a surprise to find us here, Copper, ain't it? Never figured we'd hide out right here alongside the bank, did you? Them dumb cops probably are searching all over the city, looking for where we went to. And all the time, we're right here. Hey, Jake. What? This guy's a regular arsenal. Three guns he's got. I don't care how many he's got. Take them all away from him. <laughs> hey, Jake, look at this. What? He's got three guns and a slingshot. Are you kidding? A cop carrying a slingshot around to keep the big bad robbers away. What a dumb mug he is. Oh, look, now, Slug, don't take all the Flatfoot's weapons away. Where's your manners? Uh, leave him keep the slingshot. Why, sure. Here, Mr. Dick, I'll put it right back in your pocket where it came from. Maybe you'll save your life with it. That's <laughs> <laughs> a big joke, Jake. <laughs> Look what Santa Claus brought us to play with, Pete. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Where'd he blow in from? Walked right up the stairs all by himself. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Copper, did you ever have a lighted cigar butt jammed in your eye? That's just for a starter. Then we're oh, going... Oh, no, to... you're not. Jake, look out. Get him, slug. Give me that gun, Jake. Give me that or I'll twist your arm off. Oh. Get out of the way, Jake. Oh. So you're going to give it to me. Oh. <laughs> ah, nice work, slug. You knocked him cold. Oh, I'll fix him for this. He nearly broke my wrist. Shall I croak him now, Jake? No. Wait till we get ready to leave. Then we'll play games with him. Tie him up, but good. We'll get the stuff ready to move out when the boys bring the car tonight. Then we'll come back here and take care of him. Over on your face, Flatfoot. So I can get the ropes on you. Wouldn't he like to know that we got all that dough hidden in the empty warehouse right next door here? It's the little hole through the wall of the apartment here, and we got a foolproof hideout. Yeah. You know, if he was only smart like Jake, I'd be afraid of him. But there ain't nobody as smart as Jake. There, copper. That takes care of you. Try and get out of them ropes. Hey, what you let the flat foot in here for anyway, Slug? Don't be dumb, Pete. If I had need to smell something funny and come back again with a wagon. Oh, yeah. Anyways, how'd I know he was wise to the busted glass? You know, Jake, maybe you ain't so smart at that. Yeah? What's eating you? Oh, you thought it was so smart to double back here with the cash and hide out right across the street from the bank. And the first thing, a cop smells his way right up here. So what? Only one cop come, didn't he? And he ain't walking out of here, is he? Well, no. But Who's he... running this business anyway? You are, Jake. Okay, okay. All right. Now, Pete, you and me are going back into the warehouse and fix up the stuff ready to leave. Slug, you stay here with the copper. Clean up the joint good. Fingerprints and any kind of junk that might leave a tip. Don't leave nothing. We'll be back when we've took care of the dough. Okay, Jake. I'll watch him. Oh. Oh. Fell into it right this time. I should have had somebody standing by just in case... Whoever tied these ropes knew what he was doing. I'll never get out of these. Hands tied together. Elbows tied tight to my body. I'll let... Oh, my head. Ooh. 
I wish I felt as happy as slug sounds. Hey, there's blood on my hands. The bullet hole on my neck must have opened up. The blood's made my hands slippery. Yes, I think I can get my hands loose. Ah, there. Ah, but what good's that? My elbow's tied up tight. Oh, if only I had some way to get word outside that I'm up here. I can't shout. Slug would hear me and bump me off quick. Oh, if only I had a gun, I could... Ah, but Slug took them. If only I had... Ah, I do have one weapon left. Penny slingshot. 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 Yes, shoot something into the street through the window. Somebody might find it. Shoot something. Shoot something. What? Shoot what? Shoot what? My badge. My badge. My honorary police badge. If only I can get it out of my pocket. If only I can reach it. I never have had much use for that badge, but I certainly need it now. Oh, I can't get it in the pocket. Well, I could tear it open. There. Ah, got it. Now for the slingshot. In the outside pocket. There we are. Now, if I can stretch my arms far enough apart to shoot this badge through the window, I can... What's that? What the... Hey, Copper, what are you trying to... The guy's still out cold. He couldn't have done nothing. But somebody broke that window. Maybe the dick's only faking. Maybe he ain't really out. Let me take a look. Gosh. Here you go, hey, Slug. Jake! Oh, what a break. He's out cold. I thought he wasn't coming close enough so I could grab his legs, but he did. Uh, Lady Luck must be on my side today. Just luck his head hit in the radiator that way. Now, if I can wriggle over there and get his gun. Just a little more. Oh, Jake will be back any minute. i got to get that gun before... I can roll back under the bed before Jake gets here. <sighs> so far, so good. Lady Luck, stay with me. Slug, what happened? Slug, Slug! Hey, look, Jake, the cop is gone. And Slug's out cold. I thought I told you guys to tie that flat foot up so he couldn't move. We did, Jake. Yeah, it looks like you did. Come on, maybe we can catch him outside before he gets away. Yeah. Hey, Jake, Jake, look, the door's still locked what? here. The dick couldn't have got out this way. Well, he didn't get out the way we come in. He must still be here. Look under the... Up with your hands, both of you. Why, quick. you... He's got a gun. Get him up, I said. I'm not fooling. <laughs> That's just a warning. I said I'm not fooling. Now drop your guns on the floor. Both of you. We, we better do it, Jake. He means business. You bet I do. Drop those guns fast. Okay, you win. For now. Drop the other one, Jake. I know you have two of them. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Now, Pete, slowly and easily. Kick the guns over toward me. Okay. Now, stay where you are. I'll kick those guns over. That's better. Now what? Want us to untie you? No, I want you to stay right there. And I'll stay right here. Wait a minute. It's all right, Jake. He can't last long now. All we got to do is wait here till he falls over. He's lost so much blood now, he can't hardly sit up. Sure. How long you think you're going to hold out, copper? Long enough to see you three thugs in jail. I bet they don't nobody know you're up here. So how do you expect to be rescued? I sent a messenger out the window to tell my friends I'm here waiting for them. Hey, look, Jake, the window is busted. So what? This flat foot will be out cold long before anybody comes up here. Unless it's the boys with a car come to take us out of here. You, uh... <laughs> Think you can last that long, Copper? Yeah, you'll never be able to hold that gun on us for another two hours. You might as well give up now, Copper. Think so? I want to take you three mugs in so bad, I'll... I'll wait all night. If I have to. Get back. I can see you. Don't you try any funny business with me. 
he's almost gone, Jake. Yeah. Another couple of minutes and he'll be out like a light. Yeah. As soon as he drops that gun, we'll rush him. I don't know how he lasted this long. Stay right there. Stay there, both of you. I can wait. Just as long as... As long as... Now. He's gone. Come on. Oh, everything. You get their hands up, you man. Oh, Nick. Oh, Nick. hello, Patsy. Oh. Riley. What's going on here, Nick? These are the thugs that stuck up the bank. Oh. Money's in a warehouse next door. You're a wonder, Nick. Take care of these fellas, Sergeant. Send a couple of men to get the money out of the warehouse, like Nick says. Oh, Nick, I've been so afraid for you. Did they hurt you? Oh, I'm, I'm all right, Patsy. Just a little, a little tired. Ah, she's a great girl, that Patsy. When she left you, she phoned me and told me what you were trying to do, Nick. So I got some of the men together and came as quick as I could. And we got a flat tire and we'd have been here sooner. And look, here's your badge, Nick. A little bent, but as good as new. <laughs> Thanks, Riley. Lucky you found it. <laughs> it wasn't me that found it. It was Patsy herself here. You found it, Patsy? Yes, Nick. And then Riley spotted the broken window and we came up. But don't ever let me hear you say again that I'm not observant. Maybe I don't know how many steps there are in front of my house. But when it comes to things that count, I can see them. How about next week's adventure, Nick? Got something exciting coming up? I certainly have, Ken. If you'll take a transcontinental train stalled high in the mountains in a raging blizzard... And mix it with the murder of an opera singer and her maid. And add the theft of $150,000 worth of jewels from the said opera singer. And a snow slide down the mountain right where the train is stalled. And you have the puzzle and crime that I was up against. Sounds pretty complicated to me, Nick. How'd you find the solution? Well, the solution depended on two things. A broken bottle of perfume and a chow dog that was lost in the snow. You certainly make it sound attractive. Did it work out okay? You should ask that, knowing Nick. Sorry. <laughs> what do you call the story? I call it Murder on Mad Mountain. Or the mystery of the opera singer's dog. So long for now. So long, everybody. And so long to you, Nick and Patsy. We'll be looking forward to seeing you again next week. Next week, at the same time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Carter, master detective, entitled Murder on Mad Mountain. Or Nick Carter and the mystery of the opera singer's dog. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is a copyright feature of Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. It is presented at this same time and over these same stations by the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux Clear Gloss, Linux Cream Polish, and Linux Self-Polishing Wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme quality paints. In the Nick Carter Adventures, Lon Clark is starred as Nick. Helen Choate is featured as Patsy. Original music is played by Lou White. The programs are written and directed by Jock McGregor. This is Ken Powell saying goodbye for thousands of Linux dealers all over America. This is Mutual.